Namaste Dosto. I'm going to show you how I ride solo here in India and in extreme heat like we're facing at the moment because if you're coming to India and you're going to do a motorcycle ride, you're probably going to start in Delhi and go all the way up to Leh. This is one of the most incredible rides in the world. But unfortunately, you'll be coming in summer and you're probably going to have to ride your bike from here in Delhi and it is going to be really, really hot. This ride for me is going to be torture. I mean, that's what it feels like because you're riding in like 44 degree temperature, like 111 Fahrenheit, like that hot. There's a few things you can do to get away from the heat and to survive the heat. And I'm gonna tell you all those things that I do during this video. And I'm gonna take you on my ride from here to Basoli, which is 935 kilometers from here in Delhi where I live. It's like a nine and a half hour ride. So I'm gonna take you on that ride and show you how I survive during the summer months here in India. It is not gonna be fun, it's gonna be hard, but it's gonna be worth it, that's the point. You're gonna get through the first one or two days when you're riding to the mountains. You're gonna get through it and it's definitely, definitely gonna be worth it. You cannot imagine the incredible beauty that you will find in the mountains here in India. So first things first, my choice of bike, this is my own bike. This is the Royal Enfield Himalayan. It's definitely the best bike for off-roading here in India. There's also the KTM Adventure you can look at as well. And you can rent these bikes really easily and cost-effectively here in Delhi. You might not have to ride your bike all the way up to the mountains or like I'm gonna do. Maybe you're on a tour group and they're gonna take the bikes on a trailer up there for you. Or you could pop the bike on the train. But I've heard so many bad stories about putting your bike on the train and my friend's bike's getting wrecked. So I haven't done it yet, but I'm actually gonna do it. So on the way back, I'm gonna take the train back and I'm gonna test the train system out and show you guys exactly how to put your bike on the train. And uh, yeah, let's see if my bike gets back to Delhi safely or not. So I will test that out for you. But yeah, we're gonna be riding over the next few days. And I'm gonna stop at like places like petrol stations, roadside restaurants. I'll show you everything you need to know about traveling here in India on a motorcycle and during extreme heat. So uh, let's go inside and I'll just show you what gear I'm gonna be wearing for this ride. And the ride's gonna start tomorrow, okay, tomorrow morning. So I'm just doing this now because, yeah, first things first, you're gonna wanna start real early in the morning to avoid that afternoon heat. So let's go upstairs and let me show you my gear. Now to my riding gear. You want light, breathable, sweat wicking away gear. And so I have this riding jacket, it's from Royal Enfield, and it has all these vents, and these vents are held down by magnets. There's two at the front, one at the back. You want that fresh air coming in when you're riding in those hot temperatures. I've got riding gloves, these are summer riding gloves, they're much lighter than full leather gloves. My helmet has ventilation, top and bottom, and also the pin lock system, because it will, well, it could rain while you're riding, it usually has rained on all my rides here in India. And so you need a poncho as well, but this pin lock system will stop your visor from fogging up. And some helmets, you can also get this feature, it is uh, sunglasses. These sunglasses come down for, for when I'm riding into the sun. This gold packet here is my secret weapon, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, but there's some problems with my gear. I am not wearing riding pants on this journey. Don't you do that. Get, get riding pants as well. And I'm not wearing riding shoes because I couldn't get my size here in India. Shoes stop at 11 here and I'm a 13. It's even hard to find a 10. So yeah, one thing you're definitely gonna have to bring from overseas is your shoes if you have big feet. And you can buy all this gear here in India. You don't have to bring all your gear across. This jacket was 15,000 rupees, but they did have another great jacket at the showroom for just 9,000 rupees at Royal Enfield. And this isn't sponsored. I don't do sponsored videos, I never have. I just like to support Indian made gear, motorcycles, anything India made basically. Uh, riding gloves, 3,500 rupees. Riding pants, if you want the Royal Enfield ones, about 9,000 rupees. And they've got a whole array of riding shoes, but they didn't have my size and they're equally well priced. If you want even cheaper than that, you can go to the Korobag motorcycle market and there you'll get all the Chinese imported gear as well. So if you don't want to spend all that money, a couple of hundred bucks on riding gear, you can go to that market and get it much, much cheaper. Now let me show you my first tip from this video. You're gonna wanna get this. This is my secret weapon all throughout the hot Indian summers. This is called ORS or Oral 
rehydration salts, and you mix this in one liter of water, one packet, one liter of water, and you drink this throughout the day, and it keeps you from dehydrating. So I basically live on this stuff in summer because dehydration hits me so fast in these massive temperatures. See, I'm sweating here just in, in my room with the AC on, it's that hot. And uh, there are other ways to keep yourself cool with gear. Some people will freeze their drink pouch that they'll strap to their back so they can, they can suck on it, whatever that's called. They'll freeze it and that will keep you cool for a few hours. You'll have this kind of natural AC underneath your riding jacket. I've done that once, but I'm trying to travel with as less gear as possible. So I'm gonna see you guys in the morning now. We're gonna wake up at five o'clock and then start riding and we'll stop at a bunch of places along the way and I'll give you even more tips on how to survive this long ass ride we got tomorrow. We're going like 300 and something kilometers, uh, about five and a half hours from Delhi to Lutiana. See you in the morning. Good morning guys. The sun is rising fast behind me. It's like 5.15 in the morning and we've got like a five to six hour ride to Lutiana today. I'm breaking up the ride into two different rides. So today, Lutiana, and the next day we're going to Patankot, and that's just because don't ride long distances here in India. A lot of people do ride massive distances here in India, but it's especially not safe in these summer months, okay? So yeah, this is a nine and a half hour ride, but we're splitting it up over two days. And I'm feeling really good yesterday. I was feeling a bit under the weather. I'm like, oh man, don't tell me I'm getting sick the day before the ride. But uh, today I'm good and I'm looking forward to feeling that freedom right now as I jump on my bike over there and we get going. We'll stop about halfway and I'll show you how to eat at a roadside restaurant. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how to get some petrol as well. Okay, so I'm already feeling hot and sweaty. It's already about 30 degrees, so not nearly 30 degrees. It'll hit near 40 today, so we want to get to the hotel before that. Oh, mosquitoes everywhere. I'm going to be using the GPS on my phone here to get where I need to go. It's a pretty straightforward ride today. All right, guys, let's do this. Let's get out of here. I always get that feeling like I've forgotten something when I leave each time. And I nearly forgot my passport. I woke up at like 11 p.m. and I'm like, oh my God, my passport. You can't leave home without that. In India, you needed to check in the hotels. They have very strict logging requirements for foreign guests. So you've got to travel with your passport. A photocopy or a digital image of it might suffice, I don't know. You don't want to get to that hotel that won't take a photocopy though. What you guys can see in the foreground there on the left, that is Delhi's dump. It's, we often drive past and joke that it looks like a hill station. But this is our way out of the city, left at the dump. And then we're just gonna go straight all the way to Lutiana. It's quite a boring ride actually. It's very, very straight. The fun stuff won't get in until we get to the mountains. So yeah, that's that's Delhi's dump there. It's ginormous. You're gonna see a lot of crazy drivers on the road, okay? Like a lot of crazy drivers. Just trying to push, just trying to get ahead and please just let them go ahead of you don't do anything silly if they want to go that fast if they want to drive that crazy you want them way ahead of you just let them go past man if they're beeping at you that's totally normal as well beeping is real normal here it's just like can you move out of the way i want to come past but it's polite And so I'll mostly be cruising between 60 to 80 the entire way. I won't hit 100, I don't think. Just because 60 to 80 is just a safe speed to go at because you have so many obstacles on the road once we get out of this part. 
They could be dogs, they could be cows, they could be monkeys, they could be people. There will be all sorts of obstacles crossing the road. So 638 is pretty safe. And these roads are pretty good. This is not off-roading. It's a nice, nice motorway. Eight lane motorway. And if you want, it, if you want a car to know where you are, you've got to toot the horn when you go past it. If you want them to know, hey, I'm here, don't, don't bang into me. But anyway, you shouldn't really have to do that because you shouldn't be riding in any car's blind spot anywhere that they can't see you anyway. People don't always tend to look here in India when they change lanes, so you want to stay out of their blind spot and not ride right next to a car. And another problem, there's no concept of fast and slow lane here. People will just, little cars will just drive slow in the fast lane. We're coming up to a toll plaza now. We don't have to pay, we're on a bike. So just follow the other bikes through. Oh, he's telling me go through here. So the far left, there we go, we're through. Didn't have to pay. That sun rising, beautiful man. That's a beautiful Indian sun sunrise. Usually, after a toll plaza, you'll find a, a toilet, and there is a toilet on the left here, and you'll find snacks and water and a restaurant. But let's keep going. And next stop will be a restaurant after maybe, I guess another hundred kilometers we've only done 50 so far I don't know if any of this seems scary to you or not like I'm so used to this so nothing it's like this is all normal for me okay I'm showing you what I do but if it seems scary or intimidating to you don't worry you will get used to riding in India if you're driving a car you'll get used to driving a car in India it just takes a couple of hours of practice and you start to see the patterns on the roads and learn how people drive here. Here we go, this is what a dhaba or roadside restaurant or road stop looks like. And this is busy, damn. This is the most popular brand along this road. Let's go and have a quick breakfast because I, I need one, man. So I've ridden 150 kilometers so far. I'm in a very, very important place called Kurukshetra in Haryana. Incredibly important place as far as um, Hinduism goes. And now we're at a, a Dhaba called Manat or a roadside restaurant called Manat Havali. It's a famous brand here along this road. There's so many of them. And if you don't want to eat Indian food, you can just have like KFC, McDonald's, Subway, Pizza Hut, all that stuff's here. But in the morning, it's definitely not open. But uh, you will find these Punjabi restaurants open. You can eat outside. I might go and just uh, it's like a hotel here as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna go have some breakfast now and uh, get back on the road and do the next 150 kilometers. It's not too hot yet. It is a bit cloudy today, as you can see. All right, so here's breakfast. I've got aloo paratha. This is a type of, of butter. I'm just gonna spread that on top of the paratha. And then I have yogurt as well, freshly made yogurt. That's breakfast here. And you can see this place is quite nice, quite fancy. Oh man, I feel so much better after eating. I was feeling tired after 150 kilometers because these roads are not just tiring when it's hot, they're just tiring in general riding here in India. So uh, you gotta stop often, every 100 kilometers. Take a break, take five minutes to sit down, have a drink, and then keep going. 
you feel so much more refreshed and you'll know when you're tired when you're riding now. Let's get back on the road. I got 150 kilometers more and I'm gonna have to stop at a petrol station eventually. And then I'll show you, I'll show you a hotel here in India and give you a few tips on that too. So it looks like I might have got a little bit lucky with the weather. It's looking overcast and apparently it's gonna rain at 11 o'clock, but you can never really trust Apple weather in India. So let's get back on the road. And get out to Ludhiana. Let's get to Punjab. <clears throat> oh man, I'm feeling so much better after stopping eating and drinking tea. I'm feeling amazing now. You're going to come across a lot of obstacles like this. These trucks are trying to enter the motorway backwards through a motorway exit. Yeah. So just go to the left, just go around them. You will find a proper motorway entry point just a few hundred meters up. I don't know why they're doing this. It's so dangerous. You'll come across a number of police check posts as well. Generally, they're not going to hassle you. They're just checking trucks for contraband. And you probably don't need an international driver's permit because a lot of countries have an agreement in place so Indians can drive in our countries and we can drive in India for up to six months without any kind of permit. We just bring our foreign license and show that to the police if they ask. bathrooms there but these bathrooms are usually horrific sometimes there's a queue just for motorcycles not here so we're just gonna have to line up with the cars namaste ji ram ram kya hale ah bilkul bilkul ji full Hanji. Make sure they zero it at the amount there. It should be zeroed. Thank you, G. Shukra. Are you going to go to the hospital? Yes. Yes. No, my friend is in Basoli. I'm going to go to Basoli. I'm going to go to Basoli today. Bus, Hanji. So we've got 850 there, read that and hand the money across. You've got to check they reset the meter because sometimes they leave 100 rupees on the meter. And you've got to make sure that they stop the meter. Thank you, G. And you've got to make sure they stop the meter. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And you've got to check the meter amount to make sure they're charging you the right amount. If you don't look, you won't know, and they might overcharge you. Happened to me last week. So how easy was that? Super easy, no? Just straight in and they'll help you. All right, I'm getting real sweaty now, guys. Very sweaty. It looks, it's very overcast. Thank God it's not hot or I'll be sweating even more. Okay, now I gotta jump back on the motorway. I've just stopped again at another Daba to have a cup of tea and just chill because the heat can be so exhausting and you can get like fatigued so easily. So it's starting to get warm now. It's 10 o'clock and it's just the temperature is starting to rise right now. So I'm only 40 kilometers away from Ludhiana now. So yeah, I've made real good time. I'm gonna make it before 11, before the sun really kicks in at kind of midday. And I just wanted to show you guys, like this is a real normal type of taba. This is what you can expect. Not like that last fancy one that I went to. This is typically how it's gonna be. Seats outside, no AC, and there's a blower there. That's like a, it's like a blower machine. That's like the, the AC here. 
Oh, they do have an AC room in there as well. So yeah, you can, you can find AC here, but it's nice outside at the moment. There's a crazy jam outside here. I'll give you a quick look out back. So our back, we're gonna have fields. You'll always find fields here in Punjab. It's a farming state. And then you've got the bathroom block here. And if we just go in, I mean, it's okay for number one, but you wouldn't want to do number two in here. You want to wait for your hotel. Along these little service roads, you'll find these little huts. See, this is a tire repair shop right there. These are tire repair shops and you will find them along these little service lanes. If you break down on the motorway, there's always somebody nearby to help you get your bike back and going. And they'll always be on these little service lanes, okay? It's 10 a.m. now and I am starting to sweat right now. So thank God I did leave early. That is probably the best tip for this whole video. It's going to be a sweaty hour to Ludhiana from here. But, yeah, after 11, it's just going to be even worse. So, Welcome to Ludhiana. I've always wanted to come here. I've always wanted to do a proper tour of Punjab. I'm sad that I'm not doing it right now, but I will do it. Anyway, I'm going to spend one night here. I probably could keep riding to be honest. I'm feeling good. I could probably could do another three hours. But why would I want to push my luck? You know what I mean? Why would I want to tempt fate? It's always best to just take it slow, stay within your limits, and stop before you get tired. And five and a half hours of riding is enough for me for one day. Enough that I can safely do, I feel. I probably could go to six or seven, but, or even eight, but no, no, no. Don't rush it, guys. Enjoy the ride. I rarely ever stop to smell the roses, <laughs> but I should because because this was a good day. This was a good ride, a safe ride, great food, and fun. And I feel free on this motorbike. It's the most important thing, right? I feel free. Now, I'm going to stay at a hotel on the left up here. Seems to be a quite a fancy area of Ludhiana. I've seen a couple of malls here. I've chosen a nice hotel for one main reason. In smaller towns like this, a lot of the small hotels will not take foreigners. They're just not set up because there's a lot of reporting functions that foreigners need to, um, that hotels need to adhere to. Hi, my guest too. Okay. Backside. Where can I park? Parking car. Oh, there's nowhere. What's that? Chicken. Where can I park the bike? Undercover somewhere, not like out of the sun. Huh? Yeah. Okay. No, not right now. It's okay. Delhi. Yeah, I left early, man. Hey, bro, what's up? Thank you, man. Oh, you are riding now? Yeah, man, I just got here. Oh, where are you traveling now? I'm going up to Kishtavar. Kishtavar? Oh, that's, yeah. that's so high altitude actually. Yeah, I'm just yeah. stopping here for the night. Hey bro, what's up? How are you? Yeah, one picture. 
All right, so I've just arrived here in Ludiana. The hotel's pretty nice. And the reason I book a nice hotel in these smaller places is a lot of the smaller hotels, they don't know how to deal with foreigners. See, here in India, every foreigner that checks into a hotel, they have to report it to the foreigner regional registration office. So you're logged where you are at all times while you're in India. And some of the smaller hotels don't know how to do that or don't want to do that. So you have to usually stay at a better hotel. I just arrived and they've taken my bike away and they've parked it somewhere covered. About like 10 o'clock, the heat started to hit in, especially when I got into Ludiana, it was getting really hot and my shirt's kind of like, like stuck to me, like all sweaty. But other than that, it wasn't actually torture like I thought it would be, it was actually okay. And I don't know, dare I say an easy five and a half hours, an easy 300 kilometers here. I'm surprised, I thought it would be a lot tougher, but maybe because they left early it was a lot, lot easier. And now I'm just gonna relax, I'm just gonna chill. And I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. We're going to Patan Kot tomorrow. And I'll tell you more about that in the morning. Good morning from Ludhiana. I'm on my way to Patan Kot today. It's 150 kilometers and Google Maps says it will take me three hours, but they were spot on with the amount of time it would take me yesterday. So yeah, I'm gonna trust them. Here's my bike. It gets so dirty here. Everything gets really dirty here in India. So you're gonna have to like wipe down your jacket. You're gonna have to wipe down your helmet and your gloves like every single night because they will get dirty and your shoes as well. It's been raining overnight. So I felt a bit confident. So I said, okay, let's uh, leave a bit earlier. It's eight o'clock now and it's already a little warm. I kind of wish I hadn't done that and I wish I had a lift, you know, at seven, but it's only a three hour journey, so you can handle the smaller journeys even if it gets a little hot. Let's get to Patankot. There's nobody out here on the roads today as per usual. People start life and work late here. Work won't start till like 10 or so for most people. So traffic will hit around 9 a.m. We're gonna cut through some side streets, are we? You gotta be careful trusting Google Maps, okay? If you're in a motorcycle, not so much. I mean, nah, actually in a motorcycle, you gotta be careful too. It's telling me to go right here, okay. Because one time Google Maps took me up the side of a mountain where there was no real road. At one point there might've been a road, but it had been washed away. So yeah, you gotta be careful of Google Maps. In a car, same problem. Sometimes it'll take you down these gullies, these little side streets which a car cannot fit down. I've had a few nightmares like that. And you, you just make it work. But yeah, check your route, make sure it's taking main roads rather than little gullies. On day one driving here, you might get a little bit annoyed at how people drive and how they push, but after you learn how it is and you learn you just got to get out of the way then you start to chill a bit more so yeah don't worry <laughs> just hold it all in on day one and just realize that this is how it is here and there's no malice on the road exactly yeah we consider it really rude when you're cutting in front of people or you're right up their rear end but there's no malice here in it. Same with tooting the horn, there's no malice here in it. You just gotta go with the flow and it is what it is here. So by day two, day two you'll be chilled out I think. Oh no, dead cow. Uh, on day, oh that's sad. Day two you'll be chilled out by the way people drive and you'll be okay. It'll just be normal, it'll just be natural for you, and yeah. <laughs> and then when you get back to your country, you will start driving like that for the first day. You'll start driving like we do in India, and then, yeah, you'll snap out of it. <laughs> At least that's what happens to me, because I drive it so much. One tip about buses. Buses are not chill, they're not polite here. These government buses, are uh, insane. They drive like the wind. 
They are the king of the road. Get out of their way at all costs. Especially Haryana roadways. Just stay out of their way and let them go, man. Those bus drivers are nuts here. Absolutely nuts. It actually says pilot over their windows. In the winter months, on these motorways, you can get massive, dense fog. And you can't see more than like five to 10 meters ahead of you, if that. And massive car pileups happen because of that fog. Well, not because of the fog, well, because people still drive super fast during that fog. And they, they're surprised when they smack into someone else who smacked into someone else. In winters, you can avoid the fog by riding a bit later in the day. And I just try not to ride at night if I can. We've got a little bit of off-roading here. We can take these left-hand tracks to get past trucks and everybody. Whee! I got soaked. What's this guy doing? Oh, this guy. Okay, I'm gonna try not get him wet. Hey, he's doing some religious stuff. Okay, so this is why it's gonna take three hours to go 160 kilometers just because traffic. You're gonna hit it the closer you get to every city. And the motorways kind of skirt around the city, but uh, it still goes, you're still going slower whenever you hit a city that you're, that you're going around on a bypass road. This is a border town. After Patankot, we get into the Jammu and Kashmir region, and that's where I'm going to. I'm going to Jammu and Kashmir, but specifically the Jammu region, not the Kashmir region. You got to be a bit careful. Oh, big, <laughs> big holes in the ground, and I can't see because I'm too close behind this car. <laughs> Let him go a bit further up. You got to be careful of the holes in the road. These types of things. That's why you can hear my voice going. Oh. <laughs> my voice changing while I'm talking to you and driving. And these cars, because of the big holes, they will just break if they don't see it. So you don't want to go into the back of them. Spatankot seems like a very normal, small Punjabi town. So oh, here we go, Best Western. Where can I park my bike here? Let's find out. It's Kalime. All right, he's gonna help me with the parking. Looks like we're gonna park here. I hope it's somewhere covered. Huh? Oh. oh yeah, we got good parking around the back here. Huh? Free. Oh, free uh, So he's saying like um Leave the handle free, don't lock the handle. Yeah? Okay, okay. So he's gonna, he might have to take the car in and out, move the bike. For that reason, so leave the handlebar free. So that's 90% of the ride done. I just got one more hour tomorrow to get from Patankot in Punjab to Basholi in Jammu and Kashmir. Basholi is where the border actually is. So we're gonna cross this bridge and enter into Jammu and Kashmir. I'm going to meet Arun there and we're going to spend the next 10 days motorcycling around the Jammu region of Jammu and Kashmir. So you know what to do if you want to follow that trip. And I'm going to link to some more resources down below because I've made a ton of videos about how to ride motorcycles, how to drive cars, how to just travel safely and confidently here in incredible India.